Hi, my name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a concept and character artist. I run the Zero Guides and the 3D Snippets website, and I teach online at the 3D Concept Artist Academy. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an image like this from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started. So this tutorial and project overview will be divided in three parts. The sketching and concept stage, which will be done in a software called Krita. The 3D blockout and sculpting that is done in ZBrush and the rendering and compositing stage where I'll be using Marmoset Toolbag 4 and Photoshop. I choose Krita over Photoshop for sketching because of the experimental brushes it has. And at this stage of the process, I'm not looking for any control on my strokes. Um, I'm more concerned about experimentation and discovering shapes. Hopefully you can see this, but when I try to draw a stroke, Krita tries to connect with the previous lines and it feels like I'm shading the sketch as I draw. I use a custom brush that I built in Krita, but you can achieve pretty much the same thing with the Sketching to Chrome large brush. I also use other brushes to refine the contrast of the sketch, but I keep my tool set pretty limited. During this stage, I usually do a lot of thumbnails and I explore shapes like I mentioned, but because I already have a rough idea of what I'm aiming for, I keep the iteration process short. Another thing to point out about this process is that I use a light gray color as the background, and there are two reasons for this. One is because I think it is easier on the eyes, and as I mentioned on a larger project, I would spend a lot more time in this stage. And two, because it allows me to use a pure white color to add some highlights to the sketch, and that will give me a hint of where the light is coming from. As you can see, although these sketches are very rough and not necessarily well defined, you can get an idea of what the concept is, and there are some key elements that I'm trying to preserve on each one of these sketches and the iterations that I'm doing. For instance, the big tree with roots that uh, go through the little floating island, and the simple character sitting on the edge of the island as well. Alright, so here we are in ZBrush, and this is the main tool that I use to set up and to sculpt my 3D projects. I'm using my custom UI just to speed up the process, but I'll mention where you can find every tool that I use in the process. To begin the setup of this project, I started with a simple sphere, and I used the knife brush to cut through the sphere. You can hold Ctrl and Shift to access these brushes, and ZBrush will cut out the area where the shaded line is. This flat surface will be the ground of the floating island. The next step is to bring in the Gizmo 3D. You can press W, E, or R in your keyboard, and then click on the gear icon to bring in that pop-up window with the deformers. I use the taper deformer a lot, and it's really easy to tweak shapes by pulling the controllers of the deformer, so those little orange cones. I love working with simple geometry first and keeping it this way until I have every element blocked out in the scene. For the tree, I appended a C-sphere as a new subtool, and this is an amazing feature in ZBrush. It allows you to create more complex structures really quickly. I selected the move switch, but you can also press the W key on your keyboard and place the first sphere on the side. Then with the draw option, which you can access from the letter Q on your keyboard, I started adding new C spheres to create the base of the tree. I'll repeat this process multiple times to add all the branches and add a little bit more curvature to the tree. With draw selected, you can also add new C spheres in between two C spheres just to add more resolution and ultimately uh, make things look a bit more organic. With the scale, which you can access from the letter S on your keyboard, you can change the size of any portion of the C sphere or the C sphere itself. At this point, I brought in a set of references from the sketches I did using a software called PureRef that allows you to essentially overlay a window with images and references over any application that you're using. As you can see, this process is very repetitive, but it is really easy to create these kind of like curly and complex shapes um, rather quickly. And although I have some sketches for references, I'm taking the liberty to continue the design process inside ZBrush just because now I can rotate things around and make more informed design choices that will hold better in 3D. To convert the C-spheres into something more useful that you can actually sculpt on, you can go to the Adaptive Skin sub-palette from the Tool palette and turn off the Dynamesh slider. The preview switch allows you to see what the mesh will look like, and when you're ready, you can click on the Make Adaptive Skin button, and this will actually create a new tool. So you can go ahead and select it, copy it, and paste it in your working tool. The copy-paste buttons are under the subtool palette as well. I also like to keep things organized, and I usually use folders to keep the original pieces, just in case I want to come back and change something. Now that this tree piece is an sculptable mesh, I use the move brush to tweak the branches and the smooth brush, which you can access from the shift key. And this is just to simplify the shape and make sure that it looks more organic and more natural. Now for the leaves of this tree, I'm going to select a sphere from the tool thumbnail just to work on a separate tool and then bring it back into the working tool. Using the knife lasso, I started to cut out portions of the sphere just to create something that resembles kind of like a stylized cluster of leaves. 
I like to use a brush like Trim Dynamic just to polish sections of the mesh and refine some of the hard edges produced by the knife brush. Once I had the initial shape, I used the clay polish button to polish the entire surface and convert it into a Dynamesh object. These two options are under the Geometry Sub Palette in the Tool Palette. And I have this custom palette for easy access, but you can find all of these in the Deformation Sub Palette. Now here's the fun part. We're gonna take this simple blob and we're gonna turn it into a more interesting low poly shape with the Decimation Master from the C plugin palette. The first step is to click on the pre-process current to analyze the mesh. And I'll just leave some references on the screen with and without the wireframe so that you can see the difference. The second step is to set a percentage to reduce the points on your model and click on the Decimate Current button. I'll go for a very small number as I want to clearly see the polygons on the mesh. So as you can see, the overall shape and form is maintained, but we now have a triangulated low poly version, which is the aesthetic that I'm going for for this project. You can further refine the mesh with the move brush, just pulling and pushing uh, the points around just to enhance the look of it. Now, this is just one mesh, but ideally you want to have a few different pieces to add variation. I'll do this by using the same mesh and converting it into an IMM brush. To do that, you can go to the brush palette and select the Create Insert Mesh Brush button at the bottom. And once you create it, you have a new brush that you can click and drag to generate a new piece of geometry. The great thing about IMM brushes is that you can set the angle at which you want to insert the meshes. So from the same geometry we created, you can simply rotate the camera around, click on the Create Insert Mesh button again, and this time click on the Append instead of New. I did this process a few times and then added some of the pieces to create the brush icon. So from the brush palette, you can just click on the select icon button and Sirius will grab whatever you have on the canvas as the icon for the brush. Going back to the working file, I selected the tree and dragged the first piece. And when using an IMM brush, Sirius will automatically mask everything else so you can actually split things up. So from the subtool sub palette, you can click on the split on mask points just to have a separate subtool for the tree leaves. So with the leaves mesh selected, I just kept adding pieces to build the top of the tree. Each mesh that you insert will have its own polygroup as well, so you can uh, further adjust it easily using something like the move topological brush, which respects the continuity of the topology. All right, so that pretty much covers the tools that I'll be using. The rest is just rinse and repeat. For instance, to create the rocks that will ultimately form the base of the island, of the floating island, I use the same approach, but I cut in some deeper crevices using the knife lasso. I polish the mesh with the trim dynamic, and then I use the slash three brush to refine the cracks of the rock a little bit more. After that, I just follow the same steps as before to create a brand new IMM brush just for the rocks. So now going back to the working tool, I added a few rocks on top of the island just to make it more interesting and then use the simple geometry from the beginning as a reference to place a clump of rocks for the base. For the bark of the tree, I subdivided the mesh a few times. You can do that by holding Control D a few times just to make it smoother and have more resolution and then use the dam standard brush to carve in some lines followed by the process of decimating and simplifying the mesh. So now that you know the tools, I'll move a little bit faster to show you how the rest was created. I wanted to create some grass over the island, so I duplicated the island mesh and I cut it to leave just the top area. With Dynamesh enabled and the move brush, I sorted the placement over the rocks and then decimated it. The character setup is even simpler. I use a bunch of primitives like cylinders, spheres, that sort of thing, and then the gizmo deformers that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. There are a bunch of deformers that you can use and they are all pretty self-explanatory. As I said, I like to keep the geometry simple, so every part of this character is a separate mesh. The only new tool that I use here is the curved tubes for the legs and the arms, which adds a little bit of a tube-like geometry. To complete the process, I decimated the whole character and added some grass details to the island using fiber mesh. For this, I just masked a small portion of the mesh to tell ZBrush where I wanted to grow the fibers, and from the fiber mesh palette, I enabled the preview switch. Once you can actually see the fibers, you can play with the settings and get something very low res to go with the stylization of this piece. To create the fibers, I clicked on the accept button and then used the Gizmo 3D to place the clumps of grass around the island. I also wanted to get some thickness on the leaves, so I used another tool called the thickness slider, and that's under the dynamic subdivision section in the geometry sub palette, and then I apply it to the mesh before going through the decimation process again. So as you can see, there are little difference in the tools that I use, but the process is ultimately the same. So to wrap up this stage, I also added a balloon using simple primitives and deformers, and I cut up some of the branches of the tree and basically placed them around the bottom of the island to create the exposed roots of the tree. 
Now, in terms of coloring of this piece, I used a very, very simple palette and I painted each geometry using the ZBrush Polypaint. I like to set up the main color palette first by filling the entire subtool with a base color and then using a bunch of different masking tools from the masking palette to variate the hues and the brightness of each color, just to create something more interesting. You can use pretty much any sculpting brush in ZBrush and turn it into a painting brush by turning the C add off and enabling the RGB switch and you can find those in the draw palette. You'll see that the color variation is very subtle and I'm limited by the amount of points that I have as well. But I think even those subtle variations help to refine the entire piece. All right, so now we're moving into the third and final stage of this process. Before exporting everything, I do a quick cleanup of the tool, basically renaming things, merging subtools that uh, potentially can share the same material. So for example, I merged the base of the island with the little rocks on top and that sort of thing. To export everything out of ZBrush, I use the FBX export plugin. The only two things that are important to set up here are the visible switch, just to export everything that you can actually see on the canvas and make sure that the S normal switch is off. This will prevent exporting the smooth normal so that we can actually keep those crisp and, and visible edges of the low polygons. For the rendering, I'll be using Marmoset Toolbox 4 and it is very easy to use. I simply drag and drop the FBX that I exported from ZBrush into the 3D viewport and that's it. I like to start fresh, so I'll delete all the materials that come with the FBX and then find a good sky environment that will fit the stylization and the render that I'm going for. But instead of seeing the actual image, I will keep a clean and bright blue color as the background. From the render palette, I enable the ray tracing and this immediately makes things look awesome. Using the shift and the right click on your mouse, you can rotate the environment and change the light position just to find something more suitable for the render. This crucial part of the process of rendering is where the NVIDIA RTX 3090 really shines. I changed the denoise in the viewport to be GPU instead of CPU. And even though I'm using ray tracing render, it feels like a real time render. It's absolutely fantastic to be able to work this way as you can change and update things and the result is almost immediate. And what you see is basically what you get as the render. The setup process of the material is pretty simple as well. I just created a new material and named them accordingly. You can assign a material by dragging it and dropping it into the mesh. And the only thing you need to do to bring those colors that we set up in ZBrush is to change the albedo to vertex color. And you can do that from the albedo dropdown in the material section. Of course, you can play with the roughness and other properties of the material, but I like to set up the lighting setup first and my camera. And this is just so that I know how any change that I make to the material affect the final render. Now, another cool thing about the RTX 3090 is that makes it really easy to work with more complex effects in the material, like volumetric scattering, refraction, and that sort of thing. So the feedback that you get is almost immediate. I added a spotlight from the left-hand side of the camera just to brighten up the image and the render and just put more emphasis on the character. I also added an omni light, which is kind of like a point light behind the tree. And this is just to add a bit of highlight and also uh, helps to separate the silhouette of the tree from the background a bit. For the final touches, I selected the camera and I played with some of the camera effects like the field of view, the depth of field, and some vignetting effects and that sort of thing. For the final render, I cranked up the resolution and the samples just to increase the quality of the final render and added a few render passes like the depth pass and the object ID. And that's it, the final render takes a few seconds and to complete the project, I brought in the final render passes into Photoshop just for the final adjustments. And since I render with transparency, I can recreate the simple background that I had in Marmoset with a couple of fill colors and mask in Photoshop. The ID pass is great to be able to quickly select specific parts of your render and apply adjustments only to those areas. I use this technique to create adjustment levels and that allowed me to tweak the brightness for things like the balloon, the rocks of the islands and the tree trunk. And to top it all up, I use the depth pass to create a mask and then apply it to a new field color to create a simple atmospheric effect. And this is a very simple but powerful way to integrate the whole render with the background colors. That's it for this video. Hopefully this has been of help. And if you haven't, make sure that you subscribe to NVIDIA's YouTube channel for more updates.